Hey and welcome to the Plumpo channel. If you're new to this channel, I'm JP and in this channel we explain a bit more about electronics, especially focusing on the PCB design in KiCad and Altium. Uh, for this short period of time, we're going to focus a lot on KiCad version 6, where they brought out a new software, new updates and new features. We also do some hobby projects where we build uh, stuff as you can see in the background. So if this sounds good, hit the thumbs up and subscribe and join us on our journey. But in this video, I'm going to chat to you guys about the bomb structure in KiCad version 6, especially how to make it suitable for JLPCB when you order an SMT production by them. KiCad has two different ways of doing bombs, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Uh, I struggled a lot getting the perfect bomb for JLPCB to accept and to produce my board. So I just want to tell you guys what I went through to make life easier for you and things to look out for. Uh, before placing order with JLPCB. So this video is with the bomb, different ways of generating bombs in the new version of KiCad version 6. So if it sounds good to you guys, keep watching. And if any comments, any questions, please drop below. Ask me on Discord where I can help you one-on-one -on -one or with the group. And yeah, sit back and enjoy. And as you most know, when I order PCBs for population, I normally use JLPCB or PCB way. So I use JLPCB when I do a one layer board and only have components on the top layer and JLPCB when I've got components at the top and bottom layer. Uh, that's because JLPCB only does population on the top layer. They are a bit quicker and they already have all their components in their library that you can know beforehand if they have stock or not. And they're also a bit cheaper, their population's free. So if you don't feel comfortable populating yourself, then I would advise just do a one layer board and let JLPCB populate for you when you order your PCB. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the bomb you have to generate to help JLPCP populate the board for you and to get the components you need on your board. Just to be clear, when I say one layer board, I actually don't mean a one layer board is in tracks. I mean only one side of your PCB has got components on. You can still make a two layer board with fires and the tracks at the bottom, but all your components that you want populated, it's only on one layer. If you have components on both sides, you will have to populate the other side yourself. So maybe have SMDs on top that JLPCB does, and then through holes at the back, which is easier for you to solder. But let's get on with the tutorial. So what you normally will do is you would add your Gerbers here, and you would say quote, and you'll come to a page like this where your Gerber will show your file, and at the bottom you'll say SMT assembly. Once that happens, and you go to the next stage, they've got a demo here, uh, and then you can just say next, save to cart, let me just log into my thing then it's easier to show and we say next and then you'll see you'll be able to add your bomb here and your click and place file here so let's view their sample bomb because that's the bomb they would want you to uh, use or your your bomb needs to be in a similar format for it to be accepted nicely it will accept different type of bombs but it just makes life more difficult at the end so i use Google Sheets because I don't have Office. And now you can see how the bomb structure is laid out. So they want comment, which is actually like the manufacturing part number. So you'll see 100 microfarad, doesn't really matter. You can have any manufacturer. But then for this um, microcontroller, they want Amiga 32, uh, 328p. So this is your manufacturing part number, then your designators, your footprints, and then the part number. So the LC, JLCB's part number, that's pretty cool because they actually have their own warehouse with components. So if you go here and you go support resources, SMT library, you can search different components and then you'll see C113 should be somewhere. It's this capacitor teams or resistor, sorry. So these don't seem to be matching. And there we go. There's the 15 kilo ohm, 15, and then so these numbers are easy for JLPCB to know what components they can place because you can only place components that JLPCB can source. Um, that's part of their library. You can't go, they won't import from RS components or DigiKey. So you need to use components in this library, which is fine. So it's easier for you to put these numbers in the bomb. Then you know you can get your components and they can populate it. So our goal is how do we generate a bomb like this from KiCad? How do we tell KiCad, okay, put my component first, my designator, my footprint, and my part. And that's what we're going to talk about now. I'll show you the way we can do it with a plugin, and I'll show you my easy cheating way. So the first method of how to 
export a bomb for gel pcb is making use of plugins so most of you know he can has the possibilities of running plugins and plugins are actually made by writing some code in python uh, i'm not an expert in python i want to learn a bit more this year so i can incorporate it into kicad uh, but that's latest worry so a plugin that i know kind of works is a plugin by a guy called fuck we i'll share the link below so this is not my plugin it's just someone that did it on github first so all you have to do is download it download the zip and you'll see <coughs> the zip file pop up this plugin actually has for your pick and place file and the bomb for jlpcb I don't want to get too much technical. I just want you guys to get a bomb on JLPCB. So how do we run the plugin for the bomb? First thing you have to do is first open the zip file and you'll see two files in here, bomb for JLPCB and the pick and place file for JLPCB. So these are the two Python scripts that will export your bomb. We copy this in a folder. You guys can see here, program files, keycat six uh, scripting plugins. You can kind of copy it everywhere. I'll show you how to add it to KiCad, but here you can see some other Python scripts that KiCad already had for the bomb. Uh, so now we have to go to KiCad. I just opened a project I was busy with, and here on the top you'll see bomb. Create bullet materials, and you'll see some two of the many uh, Python scripts that is in this folder. So what you got to do is so what you got to do is add it plus and then go to, go to our folder. You see there's another plugin folder at documents. I guess you can use that as well. But we go to our folder C, program files, keycat, bin, scripting plugins. And there you can see I've got the bomb, CVC, JLPCB. I double click on this. <laughs> I first add it, so I copy this. Sorry guys. And I make this there. And now I add it to my bomb generating scripts and all i do now is generate so now what we can do is we go to our project folder go to our project folder and then we should have the bomb generated on top here i don't have excel so i use google sheets so yeah i go file import upload i'm gonna just drag a file uh let's detect automatically i'm not sure what the separator is open now and there we go so now when we look at the sample bomb of jlpcb and what we exported it's pretty much the same this you can manually fit in or you can maybe add it to a part already when you create the part in keycat um, but here you can see it exported the way jlpcb wants it for interest sake let's open a python script and see what actually happens in the code to view it i use no plus plus and then i just drag it or well, i can open it it seems and there we go. So this was created by the guy I mentioned earlier in the link below. And there's some code there. And then it just writes out the values, the description. It joins all the references. So J1, J2, J3 all joined. R1, R2, R3 joined. Get the footprint. So this is the one he created. So the one that normally comes uh, by itself with KiCad by default, these two. So let's open both. So this is all just, I think, setting up the database, getting all the information out, like almost with um, using libraries in um, Arduino, just using include, now using this, and there's some functions in there, I guess. Like I said, I'm not a Python expert. And then you can see it creates, there's the columns it's creating, and here's what it creates. So get reference, get value. So in my mind, if I want to get the same out as this i can change the sequence of where it outputs and i think that's what our friend did with the other python script uh, so if you feel like playing around with chase from code here uh, here's another one you can see it's writing get source get date uh, they get value get part name get footprint so it kind of rings a bell uh, where what information they're getting so i've got a feeling if you change some stuff here you can kind of create your own bomb um, but like I said, I'm going to teach myself a bit more about Python and then I'll get back to this and write some scripts that we can use in KiCad maybe. But now I'm going to show you guys what I do. So it's not really automatically generated. I kind of slowly go through the process to make sure that all my components are correct and things like that. And then I also add JLPCB numbers to my components if I want to order from them. Um, so I'm just going to use the project I've been working on, um, the baby activity smart brain thing it's already open it seems so i'm just going to use this as an example 
it's a project I'm actually building for model baby girl so we're making Luna collection um, so this should actually arrive in like two days I think and then it's a new project started uh, but anyway that's what we want to do so if we go to the schematic first things first is I want to see can I get the component from JLPCB so the ESP32 how I do that is I go to the JLPCB website and I go to resources and SMT part libraries so here you can see all the components that you can use for your population so let's go ESP32 I'm sure they've got it and you'll see they've got some stock so I'm going to use this one and then you'll be able to see the part number I want to add this to my bomb because when I imported JLPCB it's easier for them to find the component that I want and it makes the whole process just much smoother so I'll copy this for now now over here I add a new field and I call it JLPCB part and then I can just add it over there delete the copy that's it so now this component has this part this is CP2104 I can do the same you can actually create these uh, fields when you create components so I'm actually doing it afterwards um, I'll get there later maybe make a new video about how to create components and add fields that is relevant to you but let me do the same JLPCB parts you have to kind of make sure that these names are the same um, so I'm just yeah okay, this looks fine so do they have CP2104 let's have a look yeah they do and there's my part number and I just do the same so you can go through your components and do this like I said when you create a part you can do this beforehand I'm kind of doing it yeah after the parts were created which is fine so imagine now I did that with all the components that I have what I do now is I use this button called bulk edit field symbols and you'll see all my components are actually here so you'll see all my components are here so now I can actually move it so this is our JLPC we wanted and this is what we have so what we can do is comment is I'm gonna just so this is our JLPC we wanted on the right hand side and this is the fields we have and we can actually see all our components here and we can hide and show stuff so the comment is the value you can see here so this is like the part number what the values are and I can just go like this and move it to the left reference is the designate you can see then we've got the footprint and now we want the JLPCB part so I can hide the data sheet I can hide the comments the compliance and field so I'll hide these uh, you can quantity you can't hide but it's not matter and then you'll see my parts are there actually so unfortunately you cannot export this but what I do is I just go OK and I'll take this and I'll copy it easy as that I'll take this and I'll copy this I'll delete this when you have C9 to C12 you can just delete that like that and they will know exactly it's part of their if you read how they, they if you read different ways you can give them a bomb this is allowed um, this is so they'll know this is C9 10 11 12 and I'll just go through it like this this might take a bit longer but I feel I got more control over going through step by step making sure my components are fine and then I can just go like this copy and then my JLPCB components copy you don't need a quantity did I copy the wrong thing? no it just says bigger and there you can see my CP21 has a thing so you don't need quantity because they'll use a designator to see how much it is so now I'm going to save this and then import it to JLPCB and then you'll see what happens now once I neatly done my bomb and made sure I'm happy with everything as you can see, I put it in the sequence that they would like it. Then I just head over to JLPCB. I added my Gerbers, as you can see. And then at the bottom here, I just say SMT assembly. Then I will just go next. Then they'll ask for your bomb and pick and place file. So the bomb I will just add here. There we go. And it should be okay. Then pick and place file. The pick and place file will generate from your PCB file, fabrication output, and component placement I'll make a new video exactly about this for now it's just about the bomb and then I just add it here as well I only have to add the top position so only the translated top position because I'm only populating the top 
then I go next. So once you imported it and you import your bomb and your pick and place file, you will get a screen like this. So you straight away see the components that we automatically added the JLPCB uh, numbers for is already in the system so they know exactly what you want. So when I say 1K resistor, they don't know exactly which one, but there's no problem. You can go through it and click search, and then you can choose your 1K resistor. So I normally go like 1K0603, and then you'll get something. Um, just check stock-wise. You look at specification. This is actually, so now you have to go through it until you find the 1K. It's very strange as it pop up, um, because these are all capacitors. What happens if I put a resistor there? There we go. 1k resistor and I say select and now it's there and I can go through it as well so you guys can see what it means so if you take the time to search for the component and add it to your keycap with that number in the field it will save a lot of time on this for well, now I have to go through every one and I say 100k 0603 res it doesn't matter 100k then you just have to look at what characteristics you want of the resistor uh, 50 volts yeah and then you have to add it on and on and on you also have to be very careful, I'm not careful, um, even though I might only have, let's for example, I, I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I need 5 resistors on 1K. So 5 times 5 is 25, but they will sell you 30. So they've got this reel or bag and it comes in sets of 30 for this resistor. So what will happen now is they'll populate the 25 and they will ship you the 5 extra. So you won't lose any components you pay for. So you will receive your PCB and you'll receive your components. Uh, it's very strange, but that's how it's done. I'll show you guys when I receive this board that I ordered, uh, how it comes to you delivered. And then you have to go through all this and make sure you understand what you're doing. And then I select. And then later on, you just go next, next, and you order. And then they will populate for you and they'll order your board that is fully populated and hopefully working. So that's it guys. Thanks a lot for joining. Um, we spoke about exporting the bomb from KiCad to a JLPCB format. Uh, so there's two ways you can do it. You can automatically do it with a plugin. Um, my preference is just to manually copy from the table that I showed you guys. I just find that easier because I'm focusing more on what I'm actually what components I have where it's automatic and you've got a long list, you might miss something or something might go wrong because it's not your plugin, you don't understand. But I did test the plugin and it seems to work very nicely. It's a very well written plugin. Um, but yeah, so you choose you. Um, and then we slowly went through JLPCB, how to order with the uh, production. Not entirely because you still need to do the pick and place file, but you just export the keycad. I will make a separate video. I feel then the video gets a bit long. And as you can see, I just keep talking. Uh, guys have a fantastic week we have in the world i'll see you guys in the next video hopefully this component comes and i can do a real life a, a building video again and not just these tutorials but i love doing both uh, anyway enough chatting until next time bye